Welcome back to our data exploration journey. We have navigated through ETL, ELT and cloud powered data pipelines highlighting how databases, warehouses and lakes each play unique roles in handling daily data, vast structured histories and immense unstructured volumes. Today, we dive deeper into data warehouses, the beacon of data strategy, focusing on their design and the crucial decisions around data entry and insight extraction. We'll tackle the challenges of architecture influenced by the three Vs, volume, velocity and variety, shaping our approach to data speed and diversity. Join us as we explore how today's dynamic warehouses integrate with cloud tools and analytics, readying us for machine learning and a deeper understanding of OLAP and OLTP systems. Welcome everyone to this new video on data warehouse. We have talked enough previously that how the data has ingested. But once the data has been extracted and it is transformed, data warehouse is the layer which actually it's finally end up landing. We only talked about the scenarios where the data warehouse will be used, typically where the data is structured, the scenarios where the data volume is not big, the scenarios where the schema is fixed. In this section, we'll try to deep dive what are the different characteristics of a, a generic data warehouse solution is. Let's try to understand this with the help of industrial use case. Let's say that you're working for an e-commerce company and we have been dumping our data in our data warehouse to answer different kind of business problems. Let's say that one of the burning issue is that we would like to know how the sales of the electronics item has been happening. Let's say that we want to understand what are the top few products in the electronics category which has been doing great over the last couple of years. How do I get that answer? We get that answer because of subject oriented nature of the data warehouse. The data warehouse, say for example, uh, to answer this, we would like to go to a data warehouse where we would have been dumping our electronic sales related data for the last couple of years. So whenever we go and design a data warehouse, it's always focused around a subject which we would like to understand better. So here to solve this problem, knowing which few categories of the which few items in the electronic categories have been doing great for the last couple of years we would like to go and see what are the sales of the electronic items in the last year now most of this application let's say that as i took an example of an e-commerce company like amazon we have both the online as to some extent some offline presence also let's say that experience centers of the stores of amazon now this data warehouse acts like a one integrated solution where you can pump both your online data, online metrics as well as the offline stores. And it helps you to bring some kind of synergy. An excellent example of that could be say like Walmart, right? Walmart have a great store presence and at the same time they're out of online presence. So they need to kind of bring all that data, all the sales number that happens from the offline stores, it happens from the online systems at one place so that we can see as a business how the company is growing or improving. The another important uh, characteristic of a uh, data warehouse is that it should be non-volatile. By non-volatile what we mean is that whatever data that we are storing in a data warehouse, it has to be of high integrity. It should not you know, be like uh, either it, you are losing some data or some of the data values gets corrupted. The data that we are storing has, we have to ensure that it's persistent, it's consistent and we are not losing over a period of time because that provides us a very important insights. And last but not the least, as the case I was talking about the e-commerce, everything is time bound. Anything that is happening, you'd like to see how it has improved year over year, right? So the data that we go and store in the data warehouse, most of the time, they are tied to a given timestamp. They're the time series data. 
so that we understand how over a period of time if we are talking about a sale category or a matrix how it has evolved over time over time so these are the main characteristics of a data warehouse that we will find in almost any company that we work for so before we go further we have been hearing three different terms database data warehouse and data lakes three different terms but all of them are doing the same thing which is allowing the storage and allowing the processing if all of them are doing the same thing then what is the difference yes the commonality is that all of them provide us a storage solution and all of them allows us to do the processing but the scenarios or the scale of data where they are applicable is entirely different we mostly go and make use of a database when we have limited set of data databases are more mostly used to run the live applications let's say that if a bank has to work on a day to day basis to provide the services to its customer in a live fashion a bank will be dependent on a database for its day to day working on the other hand when the amount of data that you have to go and store is quite high and you're not only storing the data for your day to day business but to understand how your business has been performing year over year so you want to store the historical data uh, data for large period of time but ensure the same schema constraints that you had in your database that's where normally you go and make use of data warehouse so data warehouse is comparatively used to store more amount of data historical data time based data and at the same time also ensure that structure is maintained we go and make use of data warehouse on the other hand if we talk about today every company is dealing with humongous amount of data and with this data not only the amount but also the variety is very high what i mean by variety is that the same application is creating different schemas for the same data the different structures for the same data and also the rate at which this data is getting generated is very high if that is the case we need some kind of solution which does not have any practical limits to the amount of data that you want to go and store and also we want some kind of generic way of storing the data that's where the data lakes comes into the play when you have to go and store huge amount of data your schema is not fixed your structure is not fixed data lake is the place to go for so i believe now we all are crystal clear on what is the difference between the database data warehouse and data lakes and in which scenarios we will prefer the right solution if you've made it this far in the video give us a like a share subscribe hit the bell icon tell us what you want to learn next in the comments and then wait or skip the wait and become a data scientist in just 12 months with the executive pg program in data science from triple it bangalore powered by upgrad in collaboration with experts from meta mintra and linkedin over 20000 working professionals from over 65 batches have already done this course now back to the video now let's try to understand the different objectives or uh, the end goals that we would like to achieve when we go and design a data warehouse and along with that we'll also understand what are the advantages that it brings to a team to a project or a company when they invest in a data warehouse solution so the very first and the straight advantage of using a data warehouse is that it provides easy accessibility it provide you a one stop place where all your data is being gathered and you can run simple structured queries to get them the second one is that it's adaptive the data warehouse solutions are typically designed to ensure that uh, the changing dynamics of the companies are accommodated well the change is the only constant in this world of software development so the data warehouse solution should also be adaptive enough also this data warehouse is designed from the perspective that it helps you decide finally where this final insights land up where it will ultimately be used to drive some business decisions whether it will be used in some kind of bi tools or some kind of aggregation numbers which your business leaders will take to decide the next steps 
On the similar lines, it helps you in making a decisions because it provides you the insider information. Not only that, uh, the data warehouse provides you the consistent data because it ensures that data is non volatile and also since the data is structured, it helps you to maintain the well structure and relationship between the entities. Not only that, uh, since in the data warehouse we store data only after processing it, it means that the data which is present is clean and it provides a faster way of accessing them. Now let's try to understand that if you have to go tomorrow and design a data warehouse for the organization that you work for, what are the different things that you will keep in mind while designing that? So designing a warehouse has two aspects. The one involves around how you streamline the process of injecting data into the system. How do you collect the data? So that revolves more around setting up a proper ETL pipeline which allows you to get a continuous feed of data in the data warehouse. And the second thing is that uh, your choice of data warehouse depends on the fact that what kind of queries you'd like to run, what kind of analytics you want to build on the top of the data storage layer. So when you're designing things, always make sure that you understand your business requirements, you understand what you want to solve, what you want to predict, and you also understand your different sources of the data, their rate of arrival, which help you to build both a robust ETL pipeline and also a query engine on the top of your data warehouse, which helps you get the right results. So with this, I believe all of us are pretty clear what a data warehouse is, what are the characteristics, what are the design decisions. But if we talk about the last couple of years, the data warehouse have also started seeing a lot many challenges. And most of these challenges are because of the explosion of data that is happening around us. For the last couple of years, we have been seeing the humongous growth of data. This growth of data is in terms of volume, which means that the total amount of data that is getting created, that is being used, is huge. The another one is called as velocity. What that means is that the rate at which the data that is being created is very high. The third one is veracity, and it means the variety of the data that we have to deal with today. Same application is working in multiple domains. The multiple types of customers are coming on the same application, which results into a huge variety of data also getting generated. So all these three Vs, which is velocity, which is volume, which is variety, is posing some kind of challenges to the conventional way of storing the data in our data warehouse. So let's try to see that how data warehouse has also evolved over a period of time and how we are coping up with these challenges in the today's world. So let's try to understand that in you know, today's modern design data warehouse solutions, how they are kind of countering these challenges created by the high velocity, high volume and the high veracity of the data. So one of the very first approach is the introduction of the cloud solutions. The cloud provides a seamless way of scaling up and scaling down your storage requirements too. So most of the data warehouse solutions are built around the cloud solutions. All these cloud providers also have multiple solutions as far as data warehouse is concerned. Not only that, uh, with data warehouse, we would like to have a better ETL, we would like to have the better insights. So all the different pipelines, the data ingestion pipeline, which is the ETL pipeline, the analytical pipeline, the data processing, all has to be in complete sync so that we get end-to-end -end solution when we are designing the data warehouse. Not only that, once the data is there, we have done the processing, we would like to build some kind of cognitive charts. We'd like to have some kind of aggregations which we can show to the business. We'll try to understand the pattern and take the right decisions. So most of these modern warehouse solutions that are being designed, they're also aimed at having a seamless integration with the BI tools like Power BI or Tableau. Last but not the least, all the companies are trying to take a data-driven decisions. The true value of data lies in the fact that how efficiently that we go and use it. 
So if we have a data pipeline set, if we have a data warehouse in picture, we should ensure that this data is being leveraged pretty well with our machine learning models analytics to take the right business decisions. So the modern data warehouses are also focusing on having a streamless, having the seamless integration with the machine learning pipelines and analytics engine. As we wrap up today's focus on data warehouses, remember the importance of staying updated with latest trends and technologies. Aage ki socho with Upgrad and prepare yourself for the evolving demands of data strategy.